Hi, welcome. Hi, Max. Hello. Hey, hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, hello, everybody. Nice to be here. So, and thanks, Max, for the good introduction. So, when you reflect, we have the now the more or less last session. So, when you reflect the last three days on the stage, presentation, on the booth, the discussion, overall and the fair sustainability is over, overall. It's important, no doubt about this. But what does it mean exactly to really face this challenge? This means that industry has really to execute the transformation to net zero operation. And this is not easy. It's not a big, it's not easy, it's very complex and it's a, not a quick win. But we can help you. And we will show you holistically how we can, we can help you in this matter. And turn now the attention to the Thrive application. We can contribute in this direction because the Thrive application is the main energy consumer in this whole sustainability and decarbonization story. So when you optimize your Thrive, you are one step before, ahead in this direction to net zero. And we want to present you four ways how you can optimize your train, uh, Thrive train. And with this, I hand over to Christine, to Christian to start with the first story on decarbonization. Thank you, Christine. <clears throat> well, it all starts with the manufacturing phase. And this is a phase where we as supplier actually can shine. We can play our part in decarbonizing our own production and then thus decarbonizing our products and then new machines. But what is it we are actually already doing? First of all, all our production sites are obligated to reduce their CO2 consumption until 2030 to become net zero. All of our production sites. For this, they have installed task forces. And um, just to give you an example from our factory here in Germany, from Erlangen, where we're producing the Synamics S120 and the Synamics G220, for example. Um, let's talk about Erlangen. They are improving their heat supply to reduce their annual CO2 consumption by 500 tons. They have installed, or they are installing, a waste management system to reduce waste by 30%. They have installed photovoltaic, they've installed bivalent heating systems. And I could go on and go on. So many things that our production sites are already doing. But it doesn't stop there. Robust eco-design is in the center to minimize CO2. For this, we're working closely together with our suppliers. And all of our procurement centers do this for all of our material types. I can give you another real example of what we're doing. Our procurement for plastics, for example. They are looking into the maximum amount of secondary raw material that can be used inside the plastics parts without reducing the functionality of the plastic. Or our procurement center for metals. They are looking into environmental friendly steel usage. And again, all of our procurement centers are focused on doing this. The whole Siemens organization is dedicated for sustainability and to reduce the CO2 footprint. And again, it doesn't stop there. We need to include our suppliers into the picture. And if I take the suppliers, uh, we as Siemens have developed a tool called Seagreen. Uh, and with Seagreen, we are connecting to our suppliers and we're communicating the CO2 values through the whole value chain, thus including them in this calculation. So we are doing everything we can on the production side, but um, this is only one way to improve the sustainability of drive systems. Another one is improving our resource efficiency. For this, I just want to give you one example. The uh, digital drive twin. The Digital Drive Twin is a machine tool that offers a virtual representation of our drives. And with this, we can speed up the design and the engineering phase, we can improve the machine quality, but actually, most and foremost, when I look at it from a sustainable perspective, we can optimize the sizing of the application 
and thus reducing the uh, resource waste, not oversizing the application. But this is actually only the tip of the iceberg. Right, Christine? Yes. And then we come, how we, um, when you turn to back from their own operation to how we can help you regarding resource efficiency. When we talk about resource efficiency, we follow the life cycle of a product. And we come from the manufacturing phase to the use phase. And the use phase is the most important phase when it comes to energy, uh, from, to uh, CO2 emissions. So there is a big lever where we can save emissions. And just one example that 95% of all emissions occurs in this use phase. So we are have to go and really optimize in this sense. And when you optimize in this sense, it comes to service business. And one great example in this direction is predictive maintenance. It's just one. And um, when you really predict a product, a machine, before it might fail, it's more than condition monitoring, thanks to analytics and prescriptive maintenance, diagnostics, and so on, we really can make enable your machine to run on a higher availability, but also to less with uh, optimized resource op um, uh, resources. And this is a sustainability in this predictive maintenance story, really to do more with less. So this is one great story, and when you want to have more details on this example, you find our experts on the booth, I think it's 107, for predictive <laughs> maintenance. And then, now we come to the next whole, one big part of the sustainability story. It's, it's the energy efficiency story. And before we come back to the operational level, I want to uh, spend some words about the e energy efficiency along the product. So how we do it, how we face it with the customer. And just to... You have to go one step further to the energy. Thanks. Thanks. There, there we are. And for the overall story, I mean, how we do it to help you to, and uh, regards energy efficient, um, be energy efficient along the production. We really, first we talk to you in a customer co-creation, really to identify the pain point, the energy pain points, what you have to really scope our actions. Then, at the next really big step, we need the transparency. The transparency on the data on the energy consumption, the KPIs and the visu visualization on a dashboard, a kind of baselining, and we have great solutions here, and all the experts are in this direction in the sustainability and energy efficiency topic. Just to put some examples, I mean, we can collect all relevant data with our energy suite. We can optimize the usage of or the, the peak loads of your energy to optimize this, just so an example. We have decarbonization audits. We have our, in all the um, topics regarding energy management systems, our energy manager pro and services around this. So a lot of things, what, how we can help along the production um, to be more efficient and to have a concrete answer regarding energy efficiency and one step in this direction, transition to a net zero operation. And then now I come back to the operational level. And please yeah, go to thank you. ahead. Yeah, furthermore, on the operations level, our drives offer cutting edge energy saving functionalities already. With them, you can easily improve your energy efficiency. And as you might have realized before, I like to talk an example. So here I'd like to give you uh, two examples again. One of them being automatic flux compensation. Sounds really complex, but it can be really easily um, started and inside our drives just by a simple click. And with the functionality, the drive reduces or increases the motor flux based on the application needs and thus reduces uh, the motor losses by up to 30%. Or think about regenerative functionalities, where you have an application with lots of braking cycles. For these applications, you can use regenerative drives or drives with the de-sealing coupling. Then, 
you can use the energy that is, that is generated during the breaking period of the circle, you can use it elsewhere in your machine. With this, you can save up to 50% of energy, for example, in hoist applications. And these are just two functions of many I could, I could mention. I could go on for another 30 minutes just talking about drives functions, but I guess it would be a bit too much for today. Um, but at some point, the end of life will be reached, but the sustainability features don't stop there, right, Christine? Yes, now we come to the fourth big chapter of sustainability, the circularity, or the so-called circular economy. So, and first of all, um, a good news, we are already active in this area for years. So we are already contributed to the circular economy. But what does it mean, circular economy? The challenge is that industry has to start the transformation of continue from linear to circular economy. And this is all supported by the so-called uh, so five R's. And the five R strategy are we should do repair, refurbish, remanufacturing, reuse, and recycle. And really to transfer this, just to, we heard already some example of what we do in own operation. So all it starts with a kind of design your product for circularity, for repairability, cyclability. This is a precondition from all. But then when it comes to the engineering, to have a smart engineering, use our great tools, what we have, to really use less material. And when it comes to the supply chain, I mean, how we mentioned already, use secondary recycled material. And just a side note here regarding supply chain, we are just not can afford to be not resilient, resilient in the supply chain. So an important. Then we come to the manufacturing and the use. And the use, it's our home turf with our offering regarding circular spares and repairs. What means long life repair and extended availability of spare parts. So this is already a great ex um, contribution, what we do regarding circular economy, and we focus on, on the three R, so we cover repair, repair uh, refurbish and remanufacturing, and focus on the last two of this. And other beside this, we still have um, great um, possibilities here and we have our expert in this direction and now with the circularity story I hand over back to a final statement. Yeah, <clears throat> so just to sum it all up, in times of tightening environmental regulations and milestones such as the end of the combustion engine in the EU, this sustainability business becomes a huge business opportunity and this includes improving product design, improving resource efficiency, enhancing your energy efficiency, saving energy, um, reusing, repair, remanufacture, doing all these things. And I think, Christina and I, uh, we've, we've proven to you that we as Siemens are fully dedicated to master all of these challenges at the same time. And we do already. So, finally, as I would say number one world drives manufacturer. Doing this is not just our passion, but it's also our obligation. Our obligation to our planet and to our children. And what's best? You can optimize your resources, you can optimize your energy, you can enjoy higher reliability, all the while contributing to a more sustainable future. So let's go for it. In this holistic way. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs>